Time for a gold rush. Hi, this is Luke from MGN, and today we're going to look at Power Rangers Battle for the Grid Super Edition. The Super Edition released only a few days ago, and if you're wondering whether now is a good time to get into the game, whether the Super Edition is good value, and how the game plays in general, well, stick around, because I'm going to review it from every angle, and then you'll know whether it's worth your time and money. You want to find out? Stick with me. We're going to go through it right now. I will preface my review by voicing my bias. I am a big Power Rangers nerd. I was in the 90s when the Rangers were at the height of their powers, and I am now with the latest iterations of the shows and comic books. I played hours and hours of Lightspeed Rescue on the PlayStation 1, and now I've played hours and hours of Battle for the Grid on PC. As such, my enjoyment and expectations for the game might be dramatically different from yours if you're neither a fan of Power Rangers or archaic fighting games like this. That aside, what we have here is a fighting game loosely based around the Shattered Grid comic books developed and published by Enway Inc. The game launched in September of 2019 to quite mixed reviews, but since then it's been augmented heavily with frequent DLC releases. As such, Enway has decided to compile all this DLC into one product, the Super Edition. So where does the game stand as of release of the Super Edition on the 25th of May 2021? Well, you're in the right place if you want to find out, because we're going to tackle Battle for the Grid, the latest release from every angle, like I said in the intro, and then you'll know whether it's worth picking up. Our MGN impressions have evolved, and today we're going to dissect Battle for the Grid Super Edition from a variety of angles. We'll give each angle a score from 10, and then give you our final verdict. We're going to score Power Rangers on 1. Difficulty. We're going to look at whether the game is difficult enough to maintain a challenge and prevent the player from becoming bored quickly without being so difficult that it's inaccessible to players who are unfamiliar with this sort of tag team fighting genre. Number two is appearance. Appearance is scored on both how the game looks graphically and how demanding those graphics are. Are the models crisp uh, and accurate to the source material? Are there frame drops on either the PC or the console versions? That's the gist of appearance. Number three is sound. Sound effects are crucial in a fighting game such as this. Uh, abilities need to have recognizable and unique sound effects, but with sound we're also going to review the soundtrack and the voice acting, if there is any. Number four is story. Some fighting games forgo a story in lieu of a focus purely on gameplay. Does Battle for the Grid fall into this crux? The game boasts being based loosely on the comic books, but does it do enough differently to maintain the player's interest for the narrative? Or is it this a simple retelling of those stories with a fighting game tacked on? We'll see. Point five is fun. The gameplay needs to be fun, it needs to be enjoyable to play. It needs to appeal to both a Power Rangers informed and ignorant audience. If a fighting game isn't fun to pick up and play immediately, it doesn't last long, and the player base falls off quickly. Where does Battle for the Grid stand in this regard? We'll get there, number five, fun. The last point, number six, is price. Does the amount of money that you have to spend on the Super Edition, despite including all the past DLC, stack up against how much time and enjoyment that you're going to get out of the game? Is it underpriced, overpriced? Well, that's point six, and we'll get there lastly. Starting off with number one difficulty, I'm going to give Battle for the Grid Super Edition a 9 out of 10. It's pick up and play. Even if you're not terribly experienced or interested in the genre in general, you're not going to be hard blocked by intimidating combos or complex mechanics. There's not combination half circle radius turns that perform the coolest looking attacks. It's a simple direction and button press. What does that mean? Well, you're going to be able to pick up the game quite quickly and you're going to feel very satisfied pulling off some of the cooler looking abilities without having much practice playing the game. If you haven't played for 14 hours every day all day, you're going to be fine, and that's a good thing. If I was to make a comparison for the difficulty of Battle for the Grid, I would say it is much easier to pick up than something like Street Fighter or Marvel vs. Capcom, and I would liken it something closer to Super Smash Bros. I say this because the abilities and combinations are easy to pull off and wrap your head around, but there is depth there in mastering the timing and execution in relation to what your opponent is doing. That's what makes Battle for the Grid such a good game in that respect. It's very accessible for new players, which is important with the newest edition dropping, but not so devoid of depth that there's no sense of competitiveness, especially when playing against other people online. 
For that execution, I've had to give Power Rangers Battle for the Grid Super Edition a 9 from 10 for its difficulty handling. Next point, number 2, is appearance. I'm going to give the appearance for Battle for the Grid a 6 out of 10. Unfortunately, Battle for the Grid is pretty visually unimpressive. Whilst mechanically it's very difficult to tell that the game had a small budget, visually it's quite obvious. The textures and models themselves aren't terribly detailed, and things like shadows and environments don't really feel like much of an improvement over the recent mobile game that released a little while ago. So why does Battle for the Grid earn a 6 instead of a much lower number for this execution? Well, because there aren't any continuity hiccups graphically between translating the iterations of the Rangers between several mediums and their fighting game counterparts here. That's something that's been a miss often in Power Ranger games in the past, and I'm glad Enway has gone to the effort to get it right. The second reason is effort. Effort if not execution. The studio hasn't left the game bare of visual effects just because the game didn't have a huge budget to make them look AAA. You're not missing out on impressive visual effects for super moves, and you don't miss out on the large scale Zord fights. These things are crucial to make a good Power Rangers game, and the studio hasn't let the budget impede their inclusion. They're there, it's a good effort, but not the most appealing to the eye. For that reason, appearance is 6 from 10. Moving on to sound. Sound is going to get an 8 out of 10. Whilst it is true the game launched without voice acting, and that some fans thought the game should have been held back until sort of details like that were ironed out, we're here to review the Super Edition. This edition includes the story update, and with it, brought finally voice acting to the game. As such, we're not going to detract from the score for not having voice acting at launch, because like I said, we're reviewing a separate product here. What I will say about the voice acting is that Enway didn't screw the pooch. Having anyone but Jason David Frank voice Tommy would have been a catastrophic failure. Not only did they secure Frank, but his performance is knocked out of the park, and it brings the game to life. Furthermore, the studio also even managed to arrange to secure Austin St. John to reprise his role as Jason, Jason, sorry, which is rare a thing for Austin to take on Power Rangers projects after his exit from the television show originally. So kudos to Enway for securing the talent necessary to make nostalgic fans of the series happy. High praise for the voice acting, but what does that leave for sound? The sound effects on the soundtrack. We'll go with sound effects first, and they're okay. Good, not great. These type of games with multiple characters taking the stage in a single fight, it's easy for sound effects to get lost in the mayhem if they're not defined and individualistic enough to be recognized. This is the issue for Battle of the Group. Don't get me wrong, the sound effects are good and they hit the ear well, but they're not different enough to really get not caught in the audible clutter that happens. That just leaves the game's soundtrack left to score on. Unfortunately, the soundtrack isn't composed by Ron Wasserman, so if you are hoping to listen to one of his iconic tracks whilst playing the game and sort of relive the golden era of Power Rangers, eh, too bad. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the soundtrack is bad, in fact, it's quite the opposite. Tony Porter does a good job of trying to capture the feel of the franchise whilst pumping the player up for the fights to come. I suggest if you're interested in the series to give Porter's OST a listen and you'll be hit with sort of a wave of nostalgia that you know gets the blood pumping, it's good. Sound gets an 8 out of 10. Story. Story is the next point, and I'm going to give the story a 5 from 10. The story for Battle of the Grid doesn't really do anything new or exciting. It just tacks on the plot lines from the comic books to give some context to the fighting. If you've read the comics, or even if you have an understanding of what occurs in them without actually having bought every single edition, then the story in Battle for the Grid is going to feel pretty tired. That's the issue with an adaptation of a story from the comic books to the game. If you already know the story, it's going to feel phoned in to tack onto the game, just so there's a reason to fight bad guys. If you don't already know the story, you're given an extremely bare bones version compared to how much detail and lore there is available from the source material. Instead of getting the best of both worlds, you're getting a poor experience regardless of whether you're familiar with the lore or not. What's the solution? Well. When the story edition dropped, uh, which the super edition includes, there needed to be either A, an entirely new story that made use of the fan favorite ranges devoid of can or continuity issues, or B, go into the level of depth that the comic books have, which admittedly would have been a pretty massive undertaking. Doing neither makes the story elements of the game feel pretty hollow. Yeah, sure, 
there is some context for your fight against the other team, but it's never retold or deep enough, which is a shame. Had the studio decided to introduce the Super Edition with a brand new story, or expand fully on what the game has to offer now, or beforehand at launch, the timing, it wouldn't have been more perfect. But, alas, they didn't. So, story gets a 5 from 10. The next point is fun. Fun, I'm going to give Battle for the Grid an astounding 9 from 10. Power Rangers Battle for the Grid Super Edition is not perfect, there's no arguing that, but what it is, and what it gets right, is that it's overwhelmingly fun. Whether you're sitting down for 20 minutes, or you want to play a long session with all the characters and delve into the various game modes, Battle for the Grid does well what all games try to. It is fun! The car selection is great for the Super Edition, and you're bound to find your favourite Ranger or favourite series in amongst those of the collection of the base game and every single DLC character. Each Power Ranger feels unique, with a moveset and animations that bring their character to life, and make each a joy to control and beat up baddies with. Jason has his sword, Tommy has the dagger, Rangers have their augmented suits from the comic books, all is right in the world. What makes Battle for the Grid so fun? Well, it's part to do with the accessibility. Like I mentioned in the difficulty, there's no gatekeeping the fighting game genre with overwhelming and intimidating controls. You can simply jump in the game, pick your favorite Rager team up, and beat the living heck out of Golda. Simple, sure, but super fun. The last point I'm going to make is price, and I'm going to give it a 10 from 10. That's right, 10 from 10. Battle for the Grid has always been well priced. The game was affordable at launch, Sure, it might have been a little light on with content then, but it was priced accordingly. But today we're talking about the Super Edition and whether the compilation of the base game and its all, all the DLCs is worth the amount of money and way are asking for it. The Super Edition is currently sitting at $72.92 AUD, meaning that you save around 50% by, beating, by buying the latest edition as a whole rather than buying the base game and just singling buy the DLCs as you want to. I like this, I love this. It makes the game easy to get into if you've not played before and you want the whole experience, and it allows you to get a reduced price on the Super Edition based on the amount of DLC that you already own, if in fact you do already own some. And we are taking less dosh by providing this option, and I can't help but praise them for the offer and the affordability of the game in general. So how does this cost effective solution compare to how much enjoyment or playtime you're going to get out of it? Well, the game is stupid fun and I have no problem giving it a big old green tick for the enjoyment factor. As for the time you'll get out, I'd say that without online play, the average amount of time you're going to get is roughly 40 hours for this price, that's pretty good. However, if you're a baron of online fighters and you want to test your skills online, there's like hundreds of hours of competitive battles to be had. That's why price is going to get a 10 out of 10. What does that mean? That means our final verdict ends up being an 8 out of 10. That's going to wrap things up for our review of Power Rangers Battle for the Grid Super Edition. That's a mouthful. If you agree or you disagree with any of the points in this review, we'd love to hear from you on our MGN.GG blog, the YouTube channel, our new Twitter account, or our new Discord, all of which can be found in the video description of this review. Thank you so much for checking out our review. 